Light is blinking. And they're off at Beckett's gate. Flower in the wind was the first of them to leave. Thoroughgood, they will head it shortly afterwards. Speak to me, will press on. Going forward as well as We Ripper. And coming over now for Johnston Porter is Autumn Rebel slotting just in behind the pace. On the rails next of all is I Love Your Smile. Sluice box outside of them is K May. Second last, Rationale. Dropping out there last of all in the early stages, Fryer away. Over into the back they head. They've left the 1,400 metres behind them. Thoroughgood held the front. It's Thoroughgood on top by a length. Running second is We Ripper. Almost two lengths to speak to me. Cruising up there third. Flower in the wind down on the inside is fourth. Three quarters of a length away next of all is Autumn Rebel who was able to get one off the fence early joined by K May going around them deeper. Over on the inside then I love your smile. Back there was Sluice Box. Rationale came out three deep and is tracking K May and last of all is Fryer away. And so as they near the 800 mark and Thoroughgood leads the way by three quarters still no change at all to the order with Wee Ripper running second speak to me third flower in the wind is fourth K made deep on the outside of the favorite autumn rebel the colt in the center a length away then as I love your smile and sluice box wider out then came rationale and still whipping them all in his fryer away 450 left to go Thoroughgood still by a half a length on Wee Ripper speak to me being put into the race now goes up on the outside here for Parnham and is about to let loose and right behind him is Autumn Rebel K May trying to hold him in speak to me goes up grab Thoroughgood Autumn Rebel worked on by Johnston Porter starts to pick up but it's speak to me Autumn Rebel and K May speak to me Thoroughgood coming back speak to me Autumn Rebel digging in Autumn Rebel on the outside grabs the lead classy win by the Colt Autumn Rebel has got there narrowly from Thoroughgood coming again on the inside. Speak to me in close up as well as K-May, a very good performance. Behind those flower in the wind and not far away, Sluice Box, Rationale, I love your smile. Then the stable mates behind them, Fryer away and Wee Ripper dropping out. Class has got the three-year-old through. Autumn Rebel. Johnston Porter gets his treble. Autumn Rebel also with a treble. He's now won three in a line. He's won four of his last five. And he is shaping up as a very, very talented colt for the Autumn. Indeed. Thoroughgood fighting back on the inside after leading. Clinching second from K May. In fact, grabbing third. Very good performance by her she was never on the course at any stage of the race speak to me just misses out after looming and certainly at one point with a hundred to go looked as though it might have been able to cling on but just missing out on the placings in a time of 152.96 so a bit of a jog trot affair 152.96 slowly run a big sprint and a long neck half ahead are the margins a lot to like about this cult though home in 35.05 by the Autumn Sun from Rebel Queen for impressive racing. Uh, C and Dem J Rouston, C Perkins, A Ritchie, K Tatum, N Aylmore, G Eifler, R Tancredi, J McGill, T Tatum, W Williams, Mr C and K Shepherd in the yard of uh, Darren McAuliffe down there at Pinjarra and written by Clint Johnston Porter having a big day, three of five so far. Scoring from Thoroughgood by Oratorio out of haste. David Harrison, Jason Whiting, and third home, K May by Awesome Rock from Dark Queen, trained by Sue Olive and written by Braden Garth and a very good run. But uh, there's a lot of appeal here and be interesting to get the comments of D-Mac in a couple of moments down there with Lockie. Race 6, 4.17 they'll go in the key clean handicap over 1,400. Troy Turner on 8, export girl in the next. Speaking of Lockie, here he is now, and he is with Darren McAuliffe. No doubt happy to see his smart colt get home again. Thanks, Darren. He certainly is. D-Mac, Autumn Rebel, he was at a very short quote here this afternoon. There were a few nervous moments throughout. He was in between horses. Describe the race in your eyes and how you're feeling throughout. Yeah, he relaxed pretty good. Uh, steady tempo. Yeah, they all tried to sort of snooker us. Uh, yeah, there was... Uh, no doubt about that, they were playing games. Uh, yeah, he got out 150 and just lengthened, and he knows where the line is now. We're sort of, that's why we're sort of keeping him going and teaching him how to win races and um, build some confidence. And uh, yeah, so yeah, pretty tradesman effort in the end. 
Eventually, he got clear air at around the 300 metre mark. In the past, when we've seen him hit the front, he stargazed a little bit. Do you just think that racing experience and learning how to win has held him in really good stead, especially in a race like this today? Yeah, he's a better chaser than uh, any. You know, you saw that last start uh, at Pinjarra. You know, he sort of just got to the front really, really comfortably, and then uh, switched off and just wanted to play games. But uh, no, look, he's going the right way about it. So uh, yeah, we'll just let him do his thing and and put him in races that I feel you know he's he's uh, comfortable at winning and, and got a good chance of winning. And and hopefully we just build from there. Now, obviously, over a month ago, now you told me that you were just keen to keep him in work and target him at a derby in similar fashion to what you did with Gadding uh, a while ago now. How's he been handling everything from behind the scenes? Yeah, no, he's good. He's typical Colt, you know. He's, uh, he, uh, he does pretty good in the feed bin. He's pretty resilient and, uh, you know, he's got good, clean legs. And, uh, yeah, I wish I had a couple more of them sons, you know. If someone wants to send me a couple, that'd be nice. Kings Parade in race number six. What do you make of his chances? Yeah, in the next, he, you know, he hasn't blotted his copybook. Uh, he's been going super. Uh, 14 will suit. Uh, I think it's a drop in class for him. Uh, he should get the right run from the gate and uh, if he's good enough, he wins. Well done here. Hopefully we're chatting again soon. Lovely. Thank you. There's Joe McAuliffe and here's CJP bringing up a treble. Third leg of a treble. He's absolutely flying at the moment, Clint. Uh, were there any hairy moments in the run? Because it looked like you were about to get covered up at one stage, but this colt looks pretty tough. Yeah, no, nah, look, um, that one I thought would drop off and it actually, credit to it, it was fighting on strong. It made a bit of a mission for me to get out and once I got out, he, his turn of foot's unreal, and we've seen it multiple times, and um, unfortunately, it's just race-related. Absolutely. Uh, Earlier in the preparation, it looked like though he was a little bit one-dimensional getting back and running on, but he jumped OK today, and he was able to put himself in a bit more of a forward position. Yeah, I think um, last start, when I kicked him out, probably switched him on a little bit more. He, he did that all himself. I, didn't, I was pretty much just a passenger in the first 50 metres, and... I said, oh, there's a spot there, let's go to that one, and yeah, he thought it was a good idea. Always tough to tell at this stage, but does he feel like a derby type in terms of distance? Yeah, look, uh, as we just witnessed then, uh, he was attacking the line very strongly, so derby's probably not out of his, um, not out of his diary yet. All right, uh, congratulations, three winners, and you've still got a couple of more good chances. Good luck. Thank you. There's CJP bringing up the third leg of a treble. This time it's with Autumn Rebel and Darren McCauley. Call, I should say, to take out the Lindley Valley Pork Handicap.